Go with me to John, Gospel of John, chapter 3. I'm going to start reading at verse 16. So when you get there, just stand if you would. This is a very familiar scripture, but I'm going to read. Read it a couple behind me. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, go with me while you're there over to John chapter 11. Verses 25 and 26 say this. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. But leavest thou this. Go with me now to the book of James, chapter 2. This will James, chapter 2. Verse 19. Says, thou believest that thou art one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But thou wilt, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without work is dead. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for this opportunity here this evening to give honor and glory, number one, to your Son, Jesus and to come together with your people and God and to give the word that you've intended for them to have. And I ask you God to anoint me for this hour and use me as a vessel. God to give this word exactly how you intended it to be given. And anoint the heart, mind, soul, and ears to receive this word God in the way that you've intended it to be received. And in all things we give thanks. And the saints said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And when you get seated, go ahead and open your going over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I feel like I'm just going to read them all the, all the scriptures together today. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Bible says there, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold all things are become new. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, become new. Amen. Let me tell you something, we're going to discuss today, as the Lord allows, the difference in believing and in being a believer. Amen. Because there's a whole lot of people who believe in Jesus but they're not believers. And the Bible says, if we begin to read it, it almost, I, I, and I did that on purpose, if you read John 3.16, which a lot of people, that's the only verse of Scripture they know. Alright? They would assume that by simply professing with their mouth who Jesus is, that that's enough. But it's not. Now let me just share this with you. There's two definitions to the word believe. And I'm going to give you the worldly definition. In other words, this comes right out of the Merriam-Webster dictionary. 
And it simply means about the word believe that it's being convinced of the reality of something. Amen? So you can believe that this building's here because you've been in it. Amen? You can believe that the sun shines because you've seen it. Alright? You can believe in whatever. I believe there's a China, although I've never been there. I've never experienced it. I've met Chinese people, but I've never been to the land. But I believe it's there because there's been enough credible witnesses in the world to tell me that China exists. Amen? But that doesn't mean I'm Chinese. And when Jesus was talking to the people, and He was saying that whosoever, John 3.16, will believe in Him. And that simply did not mean that just they believed He existed. Because the Pharisees believed. Amen. The Pharisees even believed in the miracles he did. But they used those things to try to condemn him. So they believed in what he said and what he did and used that against him so they were never a true believer in who he was. Now let me give you the biblical definition of the word belief. And it's long, so if you're going to write it down, you'll get with me after service. But it says simply this, to commit oneself Holy to Jesus Christ as the Son of God, thereby taking on the character and personality of Christ and dedicating one's life to be molded into His image. Now, when the Bible says, when Jesus speaks of those who believe in Me, that's the definition of the word believe. In other words, when he says, whoever believes in me will not will receive everlasting life. Amen. He wasn't merely saying those who put their Christian on the Facebook page. He was saying those who have dedicated themselves to be molded into his image. In other words, they have dedicated themselves to it's not just enough to believe there's a Jesus. Amen. But instead, they want to make that trip to China and experience Him for themselves. To mold themselves into His image. To walk like He walked. To act like He acts. To speak like He spoke. Amen? Am I getting this into you? So it's not enough just to go around. See, people have got it. People are inherently lazy. And they're looking for late loopholes in the Bible. And they'll say, well, as long as I profess Jesus, then I'm okay. No! Because look, we've got a problem if you believe that. What did we read out of James? He said, if you say there's a God, you do well. But we understand this, that even the devils believe and tremble at the feet of God. Even Satan himself knows the word. The name Jesus has power. And he trembles at that name. So therefore, believing can't be enough because we all know devils aren't so. Devils aren't going to make it to heaven. Their choice is to be made. They've done, they've done come under judgment and their own condemnation. So if they believe, that's not enough. That's not enough, church. What we've got to become is we've got to become transformed into Christ. Amen. Look at these little youngins running around here. We got a bunch of them. But you know what? The Bible said that that was the kingdom of heaven right there. That is. See, they ain't got to listen to my message because they didn't. They didn't got it down. We just got to pray they don't lose it. Amen. We just got to root them up so as they grow older they don't become conformed to the world. The more time they spend in it. And they keep that childlike faith. You know, my little granddaughter, Daylin, she she loves to play a game. She'll spend the night, and she loves to get to the edge of the bed with me watching, and then she'll suddenly close her eyes and make a dive. Because she knows I'll catch her. She has great faith in her papa. Now, what's going to happen one day is I ain't going to catch her, and her faith will be blended. Amen. And I keep trying to tell her, honey, don't do that. She did that just this morning. She stood up. And she, can, she can't hardly stand by herself. But she, can get better, but she just stood up. It might have been one of the other days I had her. But she just stood there for a minute. And she looked at me. And she just closed her eyes and started falling. 
because she knew I would catch her. That's childlike faith. You know that if you start to fall in life, God will catch you. He don't miss. He don't miss. Now when a child gets older, if they continue to jump off the bed, when they get to where they can stand, you might let them hit the floor a time or two. Yeah. To teach them a lesson. You might let them hit the floor a time or two to teach them a lesson when you know they can stand. You know anybody here ever felt like you took a hard couple of licks in life? Have you ever felt like you've hit the floor a few times? Well, because God missed you, He was teaching you something. We've got to become believers because there's too much in the church today who just believe. They believe there's a Jesus, but they dance the day they can count on on stage. They believe there's a Jesus, but they prance and whatever else in front of the crowd. They, they, they believe in They use Jesus' name to get you in when they call it in the church to get you into the place. But that's about as far as it goes. They don't go no farther. They believe there's a Jesus, but they don't believe in the in, in the repentance of sin. They don't believe in mentioning sin. They, they believe, you know, I saw something silly on where this one minister had posted, you know, that you have to allow God to bless you and, and give God, no, it was give God permission to bless you. If that's all it took, I'd be a millionaire. Because God knows He can pour all the money He wants in my pocket any time. Amen? It ain't that simple. That's just looking at a form of God. It's all it is. You know, Jesus Christ said that the poor we would have always. I mean, some of us will just be poor. There are people on this earth that will just be poor. I don't know the poor person in here. Let me tell you something. I, everybody here's got a house, right? You live somewhere. There's nobody in here living under a bridge. Everybody here looks like you're fed. I don't see nobody about her. you fed. Amen? Yeah. We've got to be careful what we start calling ourselves. We may struggle to get by, but join the rest of the world. We've been in a recession for nine years. Come on. It was a jobless recovery is what they told us. So we can depend on the world government. But you can depend on who Jesus is. Amen. And as you walk and you become, and I'm going to read this again, the, the biblical definition. Now there's a whole long way that I got here. Hey, you go into the Greek and the Hebrew and follow the words that were used to come to what Jesus used in Aramaic when he said, Those that believe in me, look if you just trust me, this is what he was saying. He was basically saying, if we, if we filled that back in, let's go back to John 11, 25. John chapter 11, verse 25. Now watch how it changes this when you fill it in with the correct definition of belief. It says, John 25 said, or 11, 25, verse 25, it says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that dedicates his life the molding and the mind. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. So we got it. There, there's no contradiction in Scripture. And how I know that I'm right on this is because of James. See, this whole thing is all Holy Spirit inspired. So if James wrote that believing in itself was not enough. And by the way, if you trace that root word that he was using to leave, it just simply means that you were aware of. Well, there's a couple of billion Hindus that are aware of a God. There's a couple of billion Muslims in the world, or Muslims, however you want to say it, that are aware of a God. But they don't really believe. They're not being changed. See, that's the only thing that Christianity offers. It's one of the few things that Christianity offers that's unlike. Number one, Christianity offers you a God that's reaching down to you. Not one that you have to find. Not one that you have to earn to get into His grace. That's one thing that Christianity offers. Another thing that Christianity offers is for you to actually have the ability to become like God. 
Now I'm not saying that you're going to be a God. The Bible never says that you actually ever become a God. What I'm saying is that you begin to take on. In other words, if Christianity allows you a way to take on the nature of God. His thoughts, His emotions, His thinking, His wisdom. It allows you to be able to reflect back to your Maker Himself. It allows Him to actually be able to see Him in you. Now you can look at your children and see them in you. God desires for His people to see Himself or His Son reflected back to Him in you. In you. That's every matter of speech. That's every thought. That's everything about So there's too much. And in the Bible Belt's bad for these folks. And I'm going to tell you this. We live in the Bible Belt in America. A lot of hardline traditionalism. It's not all bad. But it's also one of the worst places where people believe simply because they proclaim to be Christian that they can do whatever they want to and be okay. And that is false. That is a deceptive lie that will lead you astray. You can't be that. As a matter of fact, I challenge you, if your life's no different now than it was when you were a lost person, you need to get saved. If there's no change in you whatsoever from when you were lost, you need to get saved. Because all you had is an emotional life for the kid. It's okay. All you had. No. It's, it's an emotional experience. You've had an I'm sorry moment. You know, and I've talked about this. You can be I'm sorry and not be sorry. I mean, you can be sorry you got caught, but not be sorry. Does that make sense? Sorry to get fussed at. Sorry to get fussed at. Sorry I'm in trouble. I'm sorry, Mom. How many times has anybody here heard it? I'm sorry, Mom, or I'm sorry, Dad. And then they're ready to look at them and they're right back in it. They're right back. And one thing about Emily, at least she was always honest. I remember when she was about four or five years old, she jumped to my pickup one time and looked at her sister and said, we can do anything we want to. We're my daddy now. And Elizabeth, her sister, was like, shh, we're not supposed to say that now. <laughs> but be honest. you got to be bold. You know, like it says in Corinthians, if you're in Christ, you're a new creature, which means you don't have to regret your past. So many times I've heard people, and I don't criticize you for it, but I've heard it a lot, and I've done it too. Is I've heard people have prayer requests in their life just to keep it over the memory of something that happened in such a time. Listen, you don't really have to, even if you're in Christ, whatever happened before don't exist. It's not been recorded anywhere. God's not keeping record of it. He's washed it away. The only person that remembers it's you and the, whoever else was involved in the devil. And none of those people count. You know, I've always pictured there being a library in heaven. There might not be, but I don't know. I can see it. Where you can go and look at your own life story and everything that you can find about you that was under the blood of forgiven won't be in those books because it'll never be. It'll be. It's like it never existed. Wipe the clean. Clean slate. Clean slate. Clean slate. Well, she's alright. So don't worry her. When we said this altar was open to anybody, we mean. I would deny, you know, Jesus had some harsh words for those that would stop the baby from coming to the altar. I'm not going to be counting most. So as you go the rest of your day, I want you guys, I want to challenge us to take a few days. I see normally when we come to the end of a message, we have an altar call and get everybody on the altar and have them cry. And that's good. I ain't doing it this way tonight. Not today. I want you all to take some time with this message. I want you to take the next few days of your life. And I want you to ask every situation that comes up, every problem that comes up in the next few days, 
Every struggle you have, I want you to ask yourself, am I reflecting the fact that I just believe in God or I don't believe in God? There's a difference, folks. There's a big difference in the two. So let's all stay. We'll come back tonight. We'll continue our study in the book of Acts. Hope everybody can be here at 6 o'clock. I think the baby stole the show today. I'll get you to me, sweetie. Okay. Come here. Come here. Come here. Get me out for a minute, baby. Let's all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for bringing us together today. We thank you, God, for the word and the message that you've shown us. Now, God, I'm asking you to push these words into our hearts. Engrave them and write them with your fingers in our spirits. Help us, God, in every shadow, in every aspect of our lives, to go from being those who just merely believe in you those who are a believer in you. Help us, God, not to confuse the two, but to live and to reflect you and to mimic you in everything that we can do. We we'll praise you, God, for all that you do for us. We thank you, God, for your shed blood that saved us. We thank you, God, for the fact that we're made new in you. And help us carry that message to the lost and dying world. We thank you, Father, so much in Jesus' name. Amen.